Hi guys, Freddy here with another Retro RPG, and yes, you can see my face, so this is going to be another PDF presentation. This was something I found amongst my files the other week when I was searching for Star Race for that presentation, and this was just so wacky and out there that I just had to do a Retro RPG on it, even though I never owned it back in the day. So, this week I would like to present this over to the computer desktop. 2001 A Space Odyssey The Adventure by TSR for their Star Frontiers game, which Star Frontiers itself came out in 1982 and was their science fiction role-playing game based around humans going out into space and meeting aliens, having discovered hyperspace and general sci-fi. But 2001 A Space Odyssey, this adventure came out in 1984 and is based around the movie 2001. It presents itself as throwing out all the background of Star Frontiers and just using the rules and presenting the movie pretty much as is, if we start looking through the file. So we've got the introduction, which says, this adventure is based on the movie 2001 and takes place on Earth, the moon, and outer space between Earth and Jupiter. Jupiter, Jupiter? Ah. If you put this adventure in your Star Frontiers game, place it back in time before humans contact the other races. You must be familiar with Alpha Dawn, Expanded Game Rules, and Nighthawk's campaign book to play this adventure. Well, I'm not familiar with either, but the adventure's still very interesting. So if we flip on to the next section, we have Chapter 1, The Dawn of Man. And yes, this is a section where you, your players play the man-apes. We can see detailed here the creatures that you play. You play primitive man before Neanderthal, basically not much more than apes. And this game, this plays less like a role-playing game and more like a strategy game. The GM has a map and you go around and you explore it and you can travel a certain number of squares per turn depending on your stamina and you've got healing and all this sort of stuff. And the idea is the survival game is played in turns, each representing one hour. In one 24-hour day, there are 14 turns of daylight, and you're going around and you're trying to survive. Um, you've got combat, you fight other tribes of apes, you find a body of water, etc. You try and take over the world. And then we're on to Lunar Excursion, which again isn't a role-playing game. You play characters going to the moon like in the movie, but in this case, instead of searching for water and survival like you did as apes, you're the scientists and you've got one of the space bus things and everybody's got one chronicom and one flashlight and one pair of infrared goggles and you're searching for the monolith. And that's what it is. You're racing against, if we flick onto yet another page, there's emergency depots, there's other hazards, including saboteurs, there's a transmission, I believe it mentions, if I can find it. Let's go back. That's going to take too long for me to find the exact wording of it. But it mentions that there are Russian teams, there are Chinese teams out there, that you're all racing to find the monolith, and you as the Americans have to go and find it first. And then there's the transmission. And then the adventure jumps onto the Jupiter mission. And basically it plays out as the movie. It details the ship, you've got the characters in here, um, you've got Hal and Hal's floor explaining what goes wrong and what he does about it. You've got the characters, you've got David Bowman, Frank Paul, and the scientists who are in freezing, uh, Dr. Vin Victor Kaminsky, William Hunter, and Peter Whitehead. <clears throat> Um, there's some new skills there because the setting isn't quite the same as Star Frontier's standard. Um, you've got the bits which detail people coming out of hypersleep. You've got Hal predicting the A35 unit to cut communication to home is malfunctioning and details what you've got to do to do the EVA. It goes through the adventure beat it uh, goes through the movie, sorry, beat by beat, where you have to do everything. How malfunctions, he sends you outside, he attempts to kill you, he evacuates the ship of air, you've got to disconnect him. And then you're on to... You arrive 
on day 280 of the mission at Jupiter. And there doesn't seem to be any adventure in this section. There are just big blocks of what is said. So none of this in between has any detailing of what the players do. Basically the GM just sits there and reads at them. There is no sense of motion, but you are falling towards the star. You seem to be dropping vertically down a huge rectangular shaft. Though your speed seems to be increasing, the far end of the shaft never changes in size, remaining far away. The star field is expanding, as if rushing towards you at an incredible speed. The lights flow to all sides, slowly at first, then speeding past you. Or you past them. If any character is inside a work pod, read the following to the players. Space is not the only thing involved here. Something is happening to the clock on your instrument panel. Seconds are passing with ever-increasing slowness, as if all time itself was coming to a stop. At last, the seconds counter stops, frozen between two numbers. Continue with the following for all players. And then you read through these for characters in work pods. Continue reading the next text. So you've got this big block of text. Then 4.3, continue reading this to the players. And then we go on to the next page. It's destination. It tells you what happens. You've made your choice for better or worse. So there's no real adventure at the end. There's a couple of sort of strategy bits. We see the maps here for the valley that the uh, people are fighting over. And then we've got... Oh, I clicked back there. You know, a map of the moon and when you're researching and trying to find the monolith. And then we've got a map of discovery towards the end. And that's it. So there's two kind of strategy games, then an adventure where you've got to do exactly what it does in the movie, and then lots of text to read out to the players. A very strange adventure. And obviously successful enough, or they spent enough money that they released a sequel. They did 2010 Odyssey 2, the adventure. And this is a bit more like a real adventure, I have to say. There's more things which can happen in this. Um, you detail the Leonov and the journey to Jupiter, <clears throat> the aero breaking, and the crew have a chance of doing stuff, salvaging the discovery, going through the map of discovery, lots of that. We've got something here where if the doc Dr. Chandra character fails one of his skill checks while repairing HAL, Hal gets revenge on the players, cuts powers in the circuit breakers, and... Oh, how they disconnect him again, sorry, that is. But he attempts to stop the players. You've got the deals on Monolith, you've got what's going on at Earth, as the Soviets and the Americans go to war in 2010. The Omen, as the Monoliths disappear. Countdown, so they've got to prepare their ship to escape from Jupiter. The escape as they fire all the engines using Discovery as a booster rocket for the Leonov so it can get home. Double Dawn as Jupiter converts into a star to heat the moons around it and give them a chance at life, but creating a second sun in the sky for Earth. Europa, you've got the bits where you probe Europa and you can find out about the life on it. Chlorophyll detected, Europa conclusion. And you've got the pre-generated characters. So you've got Dr. Hayward Floyd, Dr. Chandra, Kurnow. You've got the map of the Leonov and the Discovery. And a map of the Jupiter system showing the era breaking maneuver and all that. And that's the second Star Frontiers adventure for 2010 Odyssey 2. A movie which I never thought would get a role-playing release. I certainly never thought that they would bring out 2001, this seminal classic movie in cinematographic, cinematographic history. Have I just made up a word there? I maybe have. But in cinema history, they've made up this adventure which basically lets you just play through it. So that's 2001 A Space Odyssey, The Adventure. And 2010 Odyssey 2, The Adventure. As always, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you found this as strange and peculiar and just totally weird as I did. Just the concept. Please like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing at all. But most of all, use look after yourselves.
and I'll catch you later. Bye.